The sciatic nerve block at the popliteal fossa is one of the most commonly used techniques in regional anesthesia practice. Some common indications include corrective foot surgery, foot debridement, short saphenous vein stripping, repair of the Achilles tendon, and others. As the sciatic nerve descends towards the knee, the two components eventually diverge just proximal to the popliteal fossa, giving rise to the tibial and common peroneal nerves. This division of the sciatic nerve usually occurs between 5 and 12 centimeters proximal to the popliteal fossa crease. Following its divergence from the sciatic nerve, the common peroneal nerve continues its path laterally and descends along the head and neck of the fibula. Its major branches in this region are branches to the knee joint and cutaneous branches that form the sural nerve. Its terminal branches are the superficial and deep peroneal nerves. The tibial nerve is the larger of the two divisions and continues its part vertically through the popliteal fossa. Its terminal branches are the medial and lateral plantar nerves. In contrast to the common assumption, the sciatic nerve is not enveloped by the same tissue sheet as are the popliteal vessels. Consequently, the concept of the neurovascular sheet is not applicable to this block. Instead, in the popliteal fossa, the sciatic nerve components are lateral and superficial to the popliteal artery and vein. This anatomic characteristic is important in understanding why vascular punctures and systemic toxicity are so rare after popliteal blockade. Popliteal block results in anesthesia of the entire distal two-thirds of the lower extremity with the exception of the medial aspect of the leg. Cutaneous innervation of the medial leg below the knee is provided by the saphenous nerve, a superficial terminal extension of the femoral nerve. Popliteal blockade requires a larger volume of local anesthetic, approximately 20 ml, to achieve the anesthesia of both divisions of the nerve. In the posterior approach, the patient is in the prone position. The foot on the side to be blocked should be positioned so that even the slightest movement of the foot or toes can be easily observed. This is best achieved by allowing the foot to protrude off the edge of the bed. Landmarks for this posterior approach are easily identified even in obese patients. The landmarks should be routinely outlined by a marking pen. Number 1. Popliteal fossa grease. Number 2. Tendon of biceps femoris laterally. And number 3. Tendons of semitendinous and semimembranous medially. The needle insertion point is marked at 7 cm above the popliteal fossa grease at the midpoint between the tendons. The landmarks can be accentuated by asking the patient to flex the knee joint. This maneuver tightens the hamstring muscles and facilitates more accurate palpation of the tendons. The nerve stimulator should be initially set to deliver 1.5 mA current. When the needle is inserted in the correct plane, advancement of the needle should not result in any local muscular twitches. The first response to nerve stimulation is typically that of the sciatic nerve by a foot twitch. The stimulating current is gradually decreased and the needle reposition until twitches are still seen or felt at 0.2 to 0.5 mA current. This typically occurs at a depth of 3 to 5 cm from the skin. After negative aspiration for blood, 20 ml of local anesthetic is slowly injected. Entrance of the needle into the sciatic sheath is almost always 
associated with a facial click. The skilled practitioner should use this sign as a valuable clue in conjunction with the nerve stimulation information to ascertain proper needle position. Absence of high opening injection pressure is essential to assure extrafascicular needle placement as motor response may be absent after injection. There are two types of motor responses that can be elicited with sciatic nerve stimulation at the level of the popliteal fossa. Common peroneal nerve stimulation results in dorsiflexion and eversion of the foot, whereas stimulation of the tibial nerve results in plantar flexion and inversion. Landmarks for the lateral approach to popliteal block include the popliteal fossa gris, vastus lateralis muscle, and biceps femoris muscle. The needle insertion side is marked in the groove between the vastus lateralis and biceps femoris muscles, 8 cm proximal to the popliteal crease. A 10 cm, 22 gauge needle is connected to a nerve stimulator inserted in a horizontal plane between the vastus lateralis and biceps femoris muscles and advanced to contact the femur. The contact with the femur is important because it provides information on the depth of the nerve which is typically 1 to 2 cm beyond the skin femur distance as well as on the angle at which the needle will need to be redirected posterior to stimulate the nerve. Keeping the fingers of the palpating hands firmly pressed and immobile in the groove, the needle is then withdrawn to the skin, redirected 30 degrees posterior to the angle at which the femur was contacted, and advanced toward the nerve.